I learned about Robert Moses because my studio is actually next to the BKE, which he built. When he built some of the highways, people were devastated. People moved out of their houses. He promised to place them somewhere else. That never happened. Families came together and founded this Heartbreak Highway Club to go against him, but of course had no chance. He had the position of five jobs in New York City, which is quite unusual. And only Jane Jacobs, at the end of his career, could stop him. I think he's an interesting figure because he was so brutal. He wasn't really interested in people. He was more interested in movement. Maybe he got lost in the process in the end. He just wanted to build, build, build. When you operate in an overbuilt metropolis, you have to hack your way with a meat axe. A quote by Robert Moses. So in the end, I was like, let me have Robert Moses' meat axe. <laughs> I think this is also something where I like him so much. He was so radical, like in, in such a stupid, unnecessary way. <laughs> what builder more imaginative and competent could be thought of than the United States Steel Corporation? I think Robert Moses is such a power figure. I mean, he's loved and hated at the same time. And I also, I love and hate him, but he got so much done over the 35 years. He created this outline or this blueprint for New York. And I think this is what I'm so interested in. In my recent show, My History of Flow in Basel, Switzerland, the main sculpture is actually a real-size water tank the iconic symbol of New York City, and it's functioning. So we take the water from the Beers River, it goes up through the tubing into my tank and then out of the wall throughout the space. I made a replica of Rossini's tilted house in Rome. Only the ceramic house is straight, everything else is tilted. You see five lily pads also in that show. They are called after Roberto Bulle Marx, the Brazilian landscape designer. Roberto Bolle Marx wrote, interwoven throughout a garden are the artist's outlook on life, his past experience, his affections, his attempts, his mistakes and his success. Roberto Bolle Marx was a great figure using public spaces to create his environments. But what really thrilled me was to see his maps he drew before. I started to actually draw my own city map last year when I was reading about him a lot. It's my first self-portrait, and it's the island of Manhattan in the shape of a horse set. I looked at some old Theodore Guericault drawings where he's only accentuating muscle. And I look at these old medical drawings, it reminds me of maps and city streets, and I try to place all my sculptures, which I developed here over the last four years, back into this island. I also went to Dead Horse Bay in Brooklyn, Barron Island. It's called Dead Horse Bay because there were a lot of trash companies which used the dead animals to make soap out of them, especially horses. Sometimes when you go there, you still find horse bones. When Robert Moses came, he had to make a landfill. He filled these 20 small islands together to be able to build the Park Marine Bridge over to Rockaway Beach. They had a lot of workers down at Barren Island. It's the same story. When Robert Moses came, they had to leave. I went there quite often and I collected all these different bottles and I tried to research about where they were coming from, what were they used for. And I built actually new houses for them out of cardboard boxes. In that work, I titled Trash Center Fatland. It's like a hybrid of a dollhouse and an architectural model. The ceramic horse shoes sculptures I built are also kind of based on that idea to give these people back their houses in a different way or like in a symbolical way. And there I used the horseshoe as a base or like a placeholder for an idea. And then I put another object made out of clay on top. I started with bottles coming from Dead Horse Bay. I started with plastic milk jugs and where I cut windows in it and doors. So it actually looks like a small dollhouse. I like to combine the monumental with the miniature. I like to zoom in and to zoom out of materials. I like to activate sculptures. And I'm interested in movement and I'm interested in weight and dimensions. 
And I'm interested in the connection to the ground. And that brings me from the white cube into the outdoors and now public spaces.